This creature has two hot glue guns that shoot ultra sticky goo out of its head. It has a retractable utility knife built into its mouth opening. And it comes in a range of richly colored velvet. Is this a crafter's dream or a cockroach's worst nightmare? This is the velvet worm. Hi, I'm Danielle Defoe and you're watching Animal Logic. Onycophora, commonly known as the velvet worm, is a phylum of over 200 species of super soft, super secretive, super secretors. With their cuddly and plush-like appearance, the velvet worms are a little bit like cats. They have claws, they stalk their prey, and some can even be found hunting in packs. Sometimes having the help of another makes reaching your targets easier. If you're having trouble keeping up with the ups and downs of life, maybe it's time to try BetterHelp, the sponsor of today's video. BetterHelp therapists are licensed, trained, and accredited psychologists, marriage and family therapists, clinical social workers, and licensed professional counselors. BetterHelp is committed to not only doing whatever it can to ensure the highest quality service for its customers, but the company is also committed to making therapy as accessible and transparent as possible. BetterHelp wants to match you with a therapist that works best for you. So visit betterhelp.com slash animalogic. That's better H-E-L-P and join the over 1 million people taking charge of their mental health with the help of experienced professionals. And for Animalogic fans, get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash animalogic. Because BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. Closely related to arthropods and sharing an evolutionary relationship with our favorite water bear, the tardigrade, velvet worms are darkness-loving terrestrial creatures. Onycophora are classified in two major subgroups, Parapatidae and Parapatopsidae. Even though they likely diverged hundreds of millions of years ago, before the breakup of Pangaea, Neither group has changed much since, making these creatures out of time a favorite among evolutionary biologists. Velvet worm skin is covered in a flexible cuticle of chitin, the same tough protective substance that is the main component in the exoskeletons of arthropods like insects, spiders, and crustaceans. But unlike its arthropod cousins, these creatures are soft and supple, covered in scales that give it its unmistakable velvety suit. Velvet worms can be from 5 millimeters to 15 centimeters long, and come in a wide range of fashionable colors. They are most often found in fetching shades of orange, brown, black, and blue, with a few cave-dwelling species decked out in all white. Their velvety skin is prone to drying out, so they live exclusively in areas of high humidity in the southern hemisphere and around the equator. They are so sensitive to moisture levels in the air that they become less active during dry periods. But even if you search the tropical forest litter where they hang out, you might have a tough time finding one of these daylight-hating shy guys. The most striking quality of the velvet worm is how it strikes both predators and prey by squirting them with two sticky streams of self-hardening slime. Animals squirt for all kinds of reasons. Other than the obvious waste disposal and reproduction, animals will also use the power of the squirt for movement, like squids, as well as for defense, like the horned lizard that shoots blood out of its eyes. And for hunting, like the velvet worm. This sticky slayer definitely takes the prize for most unique method of murder. To locate its prey of crickets, spiders, beetles, termites, cockroaches, and other invertebrates, the predatory velvet worm uses its sensory antenna. Once located, the velvet worm does something truly unique. It squirts its prey with super sticky slime. The slime is held in large glands in its head segments, kind of like their versions of web shooters. 
When it's ready to attack, the velvet worm shoots its goo out of two openings, called oral papillae, immobilizing its victims. Before we get into the absolutely horrifying way that the velvet worm slices into and liquefies its prey, we need to talk about the unique spray action of its slime. The velvet worm doesn't just spray its slime straight outwards. The high pressure power of its squirt, combined with the elasticity of its oral papillae, turn these openings into the equivalent of two out of control fire hoses. As a result, the slime oscillates as it sprays upwards of 30 centimeters, blanketing its snack in a layer of immobilizing goo. This fast action spray may seem to go against the otherwise slow nature of this beast. But because of the syringe-like structure of the gland and small opening, this slowpoke slime squirting muscles don't actually have to move very quickly to result in a powerful spray. When not being used, their rubbery goo guns fold inwards like accordions to await their next target. The slime hardens almost instantly into a glassy texture when exposed to air. Once the prey is sealed in its glass house of death, the velvet worm goes in for the kill. Using blade-like jaws that are tucked inside its mouth, the velvet worm slices its way into its prey's exoskeleton and injects it with digestive saliva, which contains mucus and digestive enzymes. Once the insides of its prey are liquefied, the velvet worm slurps them out like a milkshake, in true horror movie fashion. Velvet worms also use their slime as self-defense against predators, like birds, spiders, and centipedes. Hemprichi's coral snake, which lives north of the Amazon River, feeds almost exclusively on these squishy squirters. And squishy they are. They are so flexible, in fact, that they can scrunch themselves into the tiniest crevices, another trait that comes in handy when trying to elude predators. Because of their elusive nature, not much is known about their behavior. But a study on one Australian species, Euperipatoides roeli, showed that they are indeed capable of complex social behavior. Groups of up to 15 individuals with complex, female-led social hierarchies were found to live and hunt together, with dominant females feeding alone first. Males of the same species will set out to scout out new areas to colonize, like prey-rich decomposing logs, and then secrete a pheromone to attract both males and females to it. In addition to their super soaker-like slime throwers, velvet worms are also unique in that their young can be born in three different ways, depending on the species. Some are oviparous, laying eggs like birds do. Some are ovoviparous, meaning they hatch eggs inside the body like some species of snakes. The most common form of reproduction for this phylum, though, is viviparous, meaning that they birth live young, just like us humans. It seems that that's where our similarities with the velvet worm end. Unless, of course, you're Peter Parker. So what should we talk about next? Please let me know in the comments, and be sure to subscribe for new episodes every week. Thanks for watching. See ya!